Good evening, morning, afternoon, night, whatever you find a way to watch or listen to this podcast. It's me, Omar, again, from Hardware and the Between the Stripes Podcast Network. And I'm back with a guest and a little background on our guest, uh, Chad. Uh, it's a funny story because we uh, we actually met at the at the FCS title game. Um, you know, I was I was wearing my Holy Cross shirt and uh, and gear just to, just to represent the FCS. And uh, he said, oh, wow, you guys gave us a good game and asked to follow you. And you you asked me to follow you. And it turns out I did. So, Chad, I'm glad to have you on. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? And like, I know you're part of Jackrabbit Illustrated and just any other like account slash podcast that you do. Yeah, sure. Uh, but let's talk about that meeting first, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am walking around looking like a fool. You, you know how I dress up because you saw me. Yeah. And uh, I see this guy. I'm like, who's this dapper young gentleman? Good looking guy. Man, this guy's good looking wearing Holy Cross gear. I'm like, did he come to clown us? I don't know, but like, you're looking pretty good in that. So I had to compliment you because like you said, you gave us a heck of a game. I mean, geez, what about that guy? That's Luca, man. He was the only one really uh, to give it to the Jackrabbit defense and did it basically single-handedly. Um I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard once that like redhead people don't have souls. So I don't know if he sold his soul to the devil for his athletic abilities or what, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, you know, I don't have any redheads in my family, so we're not that athletically gifted. I could probably trip over a piece of toast if it fell on the floor. Uh, yeah, from South Dakota, originally born and raised in Sioux Falls. Uh, I live just on the west side of Sioux Falls now um, in a small town nobody would know of, but Hartford. Uh, been following Jackrabbit sports since uh, probably my last year in school in about 2006, I'd say. I do the Jackrabbit Illustrated podcast. Uh, I've kind of took on more and more with that my roles evolved i started out just doing a wrestling podcast so actually wrestling's like my sport if you will i i really love wrestling and uh tried to promote that brand a little bit our sdsu wrestling we got a new coach and stuff and then that kind of blossomed into helping do the background stuff and next thing you know i'm hopping on screen next thing i know i'm i'm on screen on one podcast next thing you know i'm I'm on two podcasts a week and I'm helping with a third and doing my wrestling one. So yeah. Um, yeah. I like podcasting. It's fun. You know, um, I don't do it for the notoriety. I just like doing it. It's kind of weird when people, you know, notice me and come up and say hi, like that happened a lot at the national championship game. And they were thanking us for doing the podcast. Did you get out to our tailgate? You were I did not. Um, I actually landed that morning and just uh, oh, went yeah. to the stadium. Uh, would have felt out of place at the tailgate, you know. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure Jack Rabbit fans are, are great people. It's just, you know, yeah, it is. Yeah, it would have taken a lot to just, you know, just walk into a Jack Rabbit tailgate, you know. Well, I think you know we've played Holy Cross twice in the playoffs now, and it, they're a dang good team, right? They really yeah. are. Um, I'm not selling them short at all. They have a good defense, and obviously Saluka is very talented uh it's possible that you guys could come back up to brookings again next year um that's the, i'm not trying to be cocky i think we're gonna have a real good team returning obviously and so the chances of us potentially hosting deep into the playoffs is, is high likelihood and uh i think if that happens you should come on up we'll host you well that sounds great um you know <laughs> it's funny you say that because like last night I was going over my uh, 2022 uh, game traveling schedule, just like certain, like you know, going to all the stadiums and everything. I was I was I was going over that with uh, with my girlfriend, and you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to need to put caps on the amount of games I go on. <laughs> so, but but if it comes down to that, you know, I mean, I I would I would definitely enjoy, you know, uh, maybe maybe you guys can start an internet campaign to get me up to Brookings, you know, and uh, and convince my girlfriend. That, that she's I mean, not the only one along with my family that loves me <laughs> i'll bring bring her up with you i i got a place you can stay for free if you want it's no big deal right yeah and then uh yeah, we'll just drive up to the game you can take in the jackrabbit book club that's what we call our tailgate uh you know we you know the the hack city guys right yeah you know, i'm assuming you know who they are joe and sean we we got them to our game versus ndsu not this year but last year and they had a heck of a time. Certainly sounded like they had a better time that they did at Campbell, but I guess that's kind of a 
teetotaler school from the here from what I hear. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I just that's what I hear. The well, camels I mean, is a great that. mascot though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Legit. I mean, unique mascots are the best, obviously, with you know, the jacks, you know, the jackrabbits. So it's a great mascot. Um, but yeah, like um, you know, a lot like I guess that's a roundabout way of telling the story. Chad, I gotta say, you look great too in the overalls. Uh, my girlfriend hates the overalls that I own. It's just a basic <laughs> jeans pair. So maybe she can see this and just uh, you know, be convinced, you know, the overalls are it. So yeah, that's well, kind of a funny thing because uh, if you want to hear a funny story, I can tell you. We uh so if we don't have time for that, just let me know. But oh, wait, there's no time gap. We're good. Okay, okay. So my buddies and I started tailgating. You know, we both we got into it, me and my best friend. Um, and his well, yeah, I guess they were married at the time, I think. And, no, maybe they're a date. Anyway, his girlfriend, my girlfriend, they're both our wives now. And we started tailgating. And we went to the bookstore one year and on clearance, here's these game bibs, you know, the blue and yellow. And I suppose yours would be, you know, purple and white. Right. And speaking of which the rev has purple and white ones too. You guys might match. Well, I, uh, I just have a regular jeans pair. I don't, I don't have any, any, oh. of, the, any of those. Yeah. Just a regular jean overall pair. <laughs> oh man. You got to go all in. You got to go all in. Anyway, we, we bought these on clearance, right? So they're like 50 some bucks or less. Uh, which was pretty reasonable, we thought. Started wearing them, and the next thing you know, everybody w- thought we looked silly and wanted pictures with us. So, you know, then we amped that up a little bit and decided that was going to be the thing for our whole tailgate. So both our wives got uh, got the bib overalls, the striped bib overalls, and then uh, we had another couple too. The next thing you know, we had like eight people walking around in striped overalls. We had to order them because the school store didn't have them anymore. Well, after about two years of that, everybody wanted them. So now they're pretty popular. And uh, fast forward to now, my new boss, his son, and no, his wife's brother-in-law. So his wife's brother-in-law, I don't know, is like one of the founders of Game Bibs, the company. So it's kind of cool. And I was like, really? What's his name? And then, so I'm like, he told me what it was and I'm scrolling through my emails because I'd gotten a promo code from that guy. Cause at one time we bought like six pair and I was like, is his name? He said what his name was. And it, oh, he's like, I think it's James. And I was like, Oh, don't, don't, okay. I found it. I said, are you sure it's not Justin? He's like, yeah, it's Justin, blah, blah, blah. And that sure enough, that was the same guy. So sorry. That's a long drawn out, boring story probably. But now everybody wears the game bibs. Brendan wears them. Uh, you've probably seen him on an Ariel and my wife. So our wives and Brendan and I, we all walk around in them at, at games. So if you bring her up, she'll be seeing them everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, maybe that'll convince her. Uh, I, I just don't know if, I, if I'm bold enough. I'm more into like the, the vintage style. So I'm like a pullover jersey guy, you know, just a, yeah. either a pullover sweat, sweater or like a jersey guy. But, you know, you, you make a good argument for it, you know, for the I mean, overall. So I could see that you had that classic style when I met you. I, I feel that. What what's your girlfriend's name? Her name's Kim. What sorry you cut out. No, her name's Kim. Kim. Okay. Well, you'll have to have Kim up and we'll have a good time. I don't know if you like beer, but we like beer. We like whiskey. We like wine. Uh some people don't like beer and stuff so much, which is fine too, you know. Whatever. We we can get we can get Brendan to smoke us a brisket. That guy makes some great food. Oh yeah, no, I, I bet I bet he does. Uh, yeah, no, that sounds like a great time. Whether it's Holy Cross playing there or not, I mean, definitely on my on my list now. You know, just uh, so many so many kind fan bases. Like, um, and, and I know we're straying away from our from our topic, like uh, like straying farther and farther off topic from our topic. But I'll just say this, like, you know, FCS fan bases are just so kind. Like, uh, I, I already have people from Sam Houston State asking me, hey, like, you know, join our join our tailgate for the, the Air Force game, you know, like, because uh, I plan to go into the QC game, just uh, NFL stadium, kind of, you know, kind of a fun atmosphere. And they're like, yeah, like, see you at the tailgate. I'm like, okay, um, you know, <laughs> so I, I guess I, I was going to root for, uh, for, for, for Air Force, you know, I mean, just, you know, fellow, fellow military, military school, but I'm like, you guys are making it very hard for me, you know, to, to root against you guys. But, um, but yeah, no, just, I mean, you're just showing like how great FCS fan bases are, honestly. Like, I can't imagine FBS fan base doing this. Yeah, 
they got too much invested. I think they take themselves a, maybe a little bit too serious at times, but yeah, they're good too. Fun. You know, we've, we've been to Iowa state, we've been to Nebraska, we've been to Minnesota. You wanted to talk about that a little bit, you know, and well, most of what we've done has been Midwest, upper Midwest. And, you know, they were all great. You know, we didn't have anything too terrible. Sometimes, you know, there's some comments that are like, kind of like bless your heart you know they said you know, like oh good luck today you know like okay well whatever you know that that was a little bit more on the front end of before we had a lot of success but yeah nobody really overlooks our team much anymore no absolutely not um but yeah, you mentioned minnesota and that is the main basis of our, of our podcast is about like 20 minutes in now uh or so 10 actually maybe 10 or 15 minutes in you know getting to our main point now so Earlier this week, uh, South Dakota State announced that they moved their game to Drake or either moved it or just announced the game at Drake. I'm not sure if the Drake game was announced beforehand, but they moved it, it to Target Field. OK, they moved it to Target Field for September 16th, 2023, which like something that always gets me with these announcements, especially uh, whether it be or with these games, like because I love ballpark football, but it's like I, I'm used to seeing it in like late October early November is the fact that this is like in the middle of a pennant race like this game, like September 16th is in the in the home stretch of the twins pennant race as was the south dakota state game in 2019 or sorry the north dakota state game in 2019 like that was in the middle of the pennant race so you know interesting decisions by the the people at at at, uh, at the twins but um you know i just want to know your, your initial thoughts chad on, on just the game itself and you know maybe what i just said well first of all obviously you're not a twins fan because they're never really in the pennant race anymore <laughs> they're kind of not that great they uh you know, you ever watch major league? It's like that, you know, um, no, they, they've, they've done some good things this off season. I'm not a huge twins fan, but our local beat writer is, and I went to high school with the guy. So I, I read his stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I suppose for the twins, anything that makes money is probably good for them. They're a small market team. I don't, I'm, I'm quite interested because as we were talking about that was an announced home game. So we moved a game from Dana J. Dyke House Stadium up to uh, Target Field. And, you know, I'm more I'm more in line with my buddy Brendan on thinking that I'm not a real big fan of neutral site games. Uh, I, I like the experience, right? That's cool for sure. But it's not a great tailgating atmosphere. It's downtown Minneapolis. There's nowhere to tailgate, basically, other than going to bars. Not not my preferred type of tailgate um you know if we look if we look at our attendance this last year you know we broke a basically we broke our attendance record this last last year for average fans at home games for not including the playoffs and we we averaged five uh, fifteen thousand five hundred and sixty sixty one i think it was and you know if you do like a 30 two thirty three dollar a ticket average which i think is low probably uh my tickets aren't that expensive but you know there's the high-end ones that really make up a bunch i mean they're giving up close to half a million dollars to go up there and play and i don't know what it costs now i would think that that's probably been offset by a donor um it would be my guess and that's kind of what what brought this about uh we'll probably know that more later i don't i don't have those details but uh it's drake you know traditionally that's not a very uh exciting opponent you know because they're in the pioneer league and so the the competition's not not there so it is a way to kind of get the fan base up for a game that would otherwise be maybe less attended at home um you know, they're not a terrible team. I'm not saying that at all. They've they've always played us quite well, actually. And, uh, you know, Drake Drake's local, uh, semi-local there, too. Des Moines isn't that far from Minneapolis, and there's a lot of Drake alumni. So I could see that being a, a factor. I think we're going to sell a lot of tickets to Drake alumni in, in the Twin Cities. So I don't know how it'll be attended. The sight lines on one side of the field are fine. The sight lines on the other side of the field, not so much. Um, if you look at, you know, photos from the NDSU game, 
they usually i think they have to go with a compressed end zone at least on one side if i recall correctly unless that's one of the other you know five games that have happened in the last three years and in uh in a baseball stadium the surface is always a bit of a question you know i didn't being early in the season like it is can you imagine what would happen like if what happened in the national championship game the first time we were there if that happened at the beginning of the season uh people are going to be really upset that we played this game there um i'll be on board with that uh and that happened to mark gronowski right i think you're you're probably familiar with that so there's also a a a strange tie-in that you may or may not be aware of there mark's sister uh actually sarah attended drake so she played softball there so um and so she probably will be a little bit torn on who to cheer for but i think at the end of the day she might cheer for her brother yeah, it's only natural. But uh, yeah, I mean, you bring up like a bunch of good points there too. So it's like, it's like there's like two different ends of the spectrum in terms of like these neutral site games where it's like, whether it be like a marquee game, I know North Dakota State's playing Eastern Washington this year. And like Eastern Washington had like a very uncharacteristically rough year, but it's still Eastern yeah. Washington. Like they're playing them at US Bank Stadium. So that's a marquee game that would probably sell at the Fargo Dome. Uh, and on, on the other end too, like you have this game against Drake and like, they're not bad, but it, it is the PFL. Like, I just can't remember the last time a PFL team had like a marquee, like non-conference win. I, I think I'd have to go back to like that one year San Diego beat Northern Arizona in the, in the playoffs. That's probably um, it. <sighs> so yeah. Like, I mean, just not a marquee game. So that's a good point. Just like, you know, getting people up for a pioneer league game, uh, you know, if no offense to Drake or Butler, who North Dakota State played in 2019. Um, I have to say, I think the sidelines at, uh, at Target Field are good. And uh, you're probably going to hate me for this. But uh, when I was junior in college, I made I made the trip to the North Dakota State Butler game. You know, oh, I don't I've been hate waiting, you for that. You know, I, I love I love ballpark football. And it's like, I just checked it off. You my do? List. I absolutely because I'm a, I'm a historic I'm a historic guy, as you as you might have seen from the article that I posted about the history of like ballpark football. Like, like it, it goes back to back in 2010, you know, nostalgic Omar here. Uh, 11 year old me sitting on the couch in my dad's basement uh, watching army play Notre Dame. And I was like, wow, like this is just like the 1940s, like army playing Notre Dame at Yankee stadium. Like, this is just amazing. And then army got blown out by 24 points. So, like Notre Dame scored 27 unanswered. And you know, that was that, but anyway, like, um, like again, just that nostalgic feeling where it's like, this is like, this is great. Like this is how football used to be. And so um, I've made it a goal just to go to as many like ballpark games as possible. And like, you know, the, the counts running, like, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think about, about like 10 ballparks or so, you know, uh, so, wow. you know, 10 or so, you, I mean, and that's like cheating a bit, counting the Crampton bowl, which had baseball, you know, for uh, for a period of time, even though it's like not a ballpark, definitely, but it counts. But yeah, that being said, I think the sidelines are good for me. I prefer overlooking the outfield and uh, just like, watching it kind of like I would watch a baseball game like high up you know behind home plate but uh, that's just that's just my preference uh, as, a, as a ballpark football connoisseur but no I mean you're absolutely right the fields at these games are horrible which makes me feel guilty for uh for liking some of these games because uh the fam- I mean the family and I we we drove uh you know my mom and siblings like we drove to San Diego because I didn't want to pay for a plane ticket for the holiday bowl but I, I just kept noticing how horrible like that field was and I like, kept pointing out to my brother and like this is a disaster you know so feel guilty for liking some of these games but yeah I mean I think I think it's a it's a great point too I mean and again like you from a tailgating perspective I've never been a huge tailgater you know more I'm more for the in-game experience but I can understand you know I know I can I can understand. come on up well come on up let's have a good time I can understand you know the uh the um you know, concerns with the tailgating atmosphere. Um, a question I have, I guess, like as for, I guess, as for travel, um, you know, do you think South Dakota State fans will travel well? I'm not sure how they traveled to, you know, Minnesota. On I think that was opening Thursday of the 2019 season uh, when they played. Um, do you expect like good travel? I mean, I, I, I expect to. It might be just a simple and easy question, but I expect South Dakota State fans to travel like very well to this game. So that's, that's an interesting, an interesting thing to answer. I think if it'd be anybody but Drake, yes, we would travel well. If it was Minnesota, right? If it was Minnesota, we would travel well. We traveled pretty well to Minnesota the previous game. 
uh, and we should have beat them actually. That was, I, I don't know if you watched that game, but we had them on the ropes and kind of blew that game. And we knew we had a really good team. And that, that is kind of our downfall as a fan base. We're a little bit too fair weather. Um, and it, go ahead and look, you know, my, our fan base can be mad at me for saying that. And I don't care. Just look at our regular home attendance during nice weather and then look at our playoff at home attendance. You know, that that will prove my point. So be mad at me all you want, but the numbers don't lie. Uh, so hard to get up for a non-sexy opponent, so to speak, but it's at target field. So that counteracts that, right? We just won a national championship. We've got a large alumni, uh, yeah, excuse me, alumni presence in, in the uh, in the Twin Cities, too. Comparing that to NDSU's alumni base primarily is in the Twin Cities. So that's why they're doing the U.S. Bank thing, because they can make even more money by putting it in a bigger stadium. Um, and their fans, even though their numbers have started to decline a little bit in, in the Fargo Dome, and they've had some problems filling that the last couple of years, some of that was COVID, um, but this is a unique game for them, right? being able to play in us bank a lot of them are vikings fans lord have mercy on their souls um and uh so they're you know they get to go to a game at an nfl stadium so there's you know the novelty of that and we have the novelty of this baseball i think we'll travel fairly well um i don't know that i would expect quite as many people as what we saw in frisco uh, i don't i don't know we're closer right it's only four hours from Sioux Falls, which is kind of our large, largest alumni base. Um, you know, it, it's, it's cool. Cause there's a lot of twins fans, you know, so that's cool too. You get to go to, I'd like to go, um, but I won't be going. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sad about that. Cause I'd really like to go to that, but I'm be in Germany at Oktoberfest. So, um, that kind of trumps that. And, and I've had people calling me out online for not being a fan, whatever, man, you come to, you come to Germany and tell me it's not cooler than any tailgate, you know, that you've had, and then you, you go ahead and have that. So um, yeah, that's a really long winded answer to your question there. No, I mean, I, I appreciate, I mean, I think it's a great answer. It's just like, I think it's funny though. How like, <laughs> You know, when you said you couldn't make it, I thought it was gonna be for like a super sad reason. And then like, you know, like here you are. Like, oh, I'll be in Germany. It's like, okay, like that that was definitely uh that was definitely a turn. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's a good point. I didn't I didn't really know about the alumni bases. And I, it always seems like in these type of games, when it's a neutral site game, like you rely on alumni bases, you know, especially like looking at like the um you know a lot of hbcu classics and looking at this year too i think for howard because i went that, i went to the howard um howard harvard game at audi field and it's like you know moving to a bigger venue a bigger sexier venue downtown dc um and part of that is because you know you know howard of course being in dc but it's like harvard having mm -hmm. a lot of like yep. alumni yep. in dc you know a lot of uh you know cheese and che was it cheese and crackers or something like you know cheese, yeah. cheese and wine yeah cheese, cheese and, and wine, wine alumni yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cheese and wine alumni and uh in DC, but I mean the the cheese and wine alumni. I don't think they really showed up, you know. So I feel like that's kind of the moment, the main motivator for um for you know a lot of these games. But I mean, I I just think it's funny though. You're saying like it's not a sexy game. Like you're saying you're saying that North Dakota State can't get you know excited to play the 2011 Global Kilimanjaro Bowl champs in uh in Drake. You know, like I, I gotta, say, <laughs> you know, it's uh, like come on now. You got, I mean, you're kidding me, right? But. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a good point too. Like, it's interesting to see. I mean, I, I feel like the competition aspect is like, can we make a better showing than North Dakota State, not only at Target Field, but a couple weeks before in, in Minneapolis? I wonder if that will drive your fans too, honestly. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't think we get as many people as NDSU did. I sure as heck hope that's not the case because that's going to be something that they did better than us. You know, this is all we've heard forever, right? So we constantly have lived in their shadow. And when they win nine championships, it's going to take us 10 championships to not be under that shadow, right? So everybody's in their shadow. It's kind of unrealistic, except for we're the only people that give them a challenge on a regular basis, right? So, so that's where our rivalries really, really came you know, and it grew because we, we did the transition together. I'm sure you've seen all the stuff on that, 
you know, so we needed each other for that. And obviously they had a little more success than us. Uh, a little's maybe underselling that, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think we should, I don't think we should compare ourselves to that. We should do as good as we can. And if we can get, you know, if we can get 20,000 people there, that'd be, that'd be a success in my book. Personally, I think it may not be a success financially, but um, I don't know. I really don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird thing, this game. And uh, you know, you were, you were talking about playing on, playing on football and on, on uh, baseball stadiums. Do you have a do you have a favorite football team from the NFL? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, I kind of like, want to take a left turn here a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, so my dad was born in the Bay Area, so I mean, I'm an, I'm a Niners fan. Um, okay, but I'm not a huge NFL guy. Like, it, it's weird because, I mean, while yes, I I really like the Niners. Like, it's funny because I was just as like like during the uh, the Generals, uh, New Jersey Generals, like playoff run in the USFL last year. Like, I was like. I was like as into it as I am like right now, like with the Niners and the, you know, NFC nice. title game. So it's just weird. I'm, I'm a definitely a college guy, but yeah, I'm a Niners fan. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think my love of football started in the NFL and I've migrated to college. I enjoy the college game more, but it reminds me of back when I started becoming an NFL fan, uh, I, be, I was a Packers fan. That's what I've been forever. And I'm sure you're aware the Packers used to play in Milwaukee. And then, so then they had like season ticket holders from Milwaukee and season tickers, ticket holders in green Bay. And it was kind of interesting to learn all the history there. So if you ever want a good read, you can, you can go, go down that rabbit hole sometime. It's kind of interesting. So. Yeah, I probably will. (laughs) But yeah, no, I mean, it, it's interesting too. Like, and I mean, it won't be a regular occurrence, I guess, like that, you know, it's like, cause it's interesting too. Like you bring that up and I think about Sam Houston, how like until their stadium kind of meets FBS requirements um, or they get like that boost in attendance, like they're going to have that yearly game in Houston, which like, I wonder how, you know, the students feel, how, I mean, the fans, like the, I guess the local fans in Huntsville, but from what, what, what I've heard from like, you know, uh, different SHSU voices, it's like, it's all good because a lot of alumni are in Houston anyway. So it's like, you know, bring up Houston or Rice or the Air Force Academy, like we'll, we'll come to it. So it's like interesting you bring that up. You know, Texas football a lot better than me probably, but uh, didn't they always play uh, SFA in, in, uh, in energy? Isn't that the yes. battle of Piney Woods was, yes. was, was there. Yeah. So they already kind of had that going on in a way. Right. So um yeah i i don't know yeah i mean i i think i think what did what did ndsu get their last attendance Thirty seven thousand people like, if we can um, get that i'll be blown away i think that's what the last attendance it was thirty seven thousand something i want to say you know like 35k um, it was like around 30 okay. 30 35 what, whatever i guess the number yeah. is 37 to beat them um i I'd, I'd like to be positive but i just I don't see it happening. Like I just, we have a hard enough time filling our own stadium. Right. So. Good point. Well, maybe I'll, I'll give you this, the Holy Cross fan uh, a couple years ago, I, I sneaked out um, to on, on a weekend to the, uh, the whole, the EBW classic at, at Polar Park in Worcester first football game at the new ballpark in Worcester. First time I've been in Worcester in like, I want to say, let's see, I moved in 2011 in you know 10 years after yeah, some of a decade i've been in worcester so it was good to be back even if it was just for a day but uh it seemed like that game energized that fan base you know uh playing at the at the, at the worcester red sox park uh in the shadow of the worcester wall which like it's funny the fun fact about polar park is like every single red sox minor league, oh almost almost every single red sox minor league affiliate their ballpark is a reflection of fenway it's like a mini fenway park I went to like an affiliate in South Carolina when I was stationed in, in Georgia, um, you know, mini Fenway Park, except for Polar Park, which is just the opposite. You know, the, the, the big wall is in right field. But, you know, that's that's just a stadium nerd, you know, kind of tangent. But, yeah, like it seemed like it was a sellout crowd. And it seemed like as much as I love fit and field out in Worcester. Um, sorry, I just got a message. My connection's unstable. So we'll fight through that, hopefully. But as much as I love fit and field in Worcester. Yeah, and I was noticing it. it. Yeah, as much as I love Pitt and Field Sorry. and Worcester and um and just the history, it's like still kind of uh an old steel, you know, 
horseshoe like that's next to the interstate highway you know so I, I don't know if it I don't know if it have the same effect like if this game will have the same effect like energizing the South Dakota State fan base but I don't think they need ener- ener- energizing you know especially uh, after a national title I just want to make that clear but you know I, I'd say I guess that's like kind of like my outside the box thought uh, no that's a good point and and I like that you bring up that they don't we don't really need energizing after the national championship. And uh, I think you're right. Like I could be completely off base because the turnout in Texas far exceeded what I expected. Um, I think if you really, I'm, it's hard for me to be completely objection of objectionable on it, but um, you know, I think we had more people there in blue and yellow than we did. Well, and for that matter, we all wore blue on purpose. I think there was more blue than there was yellow or green. And uh, I don't know, you, you, you would have a good sense of that because of where you were sitting and, and, you know, you don't, you don't have a, you don't have a, a cart in the race, I guess, you know, what, what was your feel on, on how that was attendance wise at the national championship game? How did you see the crowd make up 20%, 30%, obviously is more than that. I'm just percentage wise is what I was trying to say. I mean, not exactly. I didn't really get like an exact like feel or percentage, but I could feel that. And I kind of expected, you know, there would be more South Dakota state fans and like North Dakota state fans. I'd say it was more like 60, 40, 55, 45. Cause like, I feel like with, with North Dakota state winning as many titles as they do and, you know, going to Frisco as often as they do, like not even the Dakota marker game could bring out more, you know, North Dakota state fans, you know, um, because like, it's been there, done that, like, you know, funny story as a fan, like my perspective as a fan is like, there are very few, games that I would like drop everything and go to you know I don't think like for for, for perspective like back in 2020 right um army initially didn't make a bowl so you know that was that was sad but I just had a feeling someone would get COVID you know and drop out um you know I wasn't hoping for it just want to sit the sure I wasn't hoping for it but ended up happening and like Tennessee dropped out of Liberty Bowl and like I remember sitting down with my mom and like and like saying like I was just on Christmas break had about a month off it would have been longest Christmas break in my time at the academy but I was like I'm like, this will literally never happen again. Like, I got to drop everything and go to Memphis for the Liberty Bowl. And, like, my co-host Jackson, Florida Gators fan, he, like, teases me all the time. He's like, oh, you thought the Liberty Bowl was a once-in-a-lifetime bowl game? Like, okay, you know what? Just, you know, you know, just give me a break. But, yeah, like, um, but, yeah, so I just feel like that that emotion kind of, like, wears down. Like, senior team with national titles kind of wears down after, like, I don't know, probably the fourth – no, honestly, probably the third national title. So I guess that's a long answer to your question. No, that's fair. I, I, and I think you, I think you're right. I think probably the eighth one was where they kind of started. Maybe the seventh, to eighth is where they started seeing kind of a, a taper down, you know? Um, yeah. So there's not many games you drop everything for, but how about a uh, Miami, Miami game? Let's talk about that a little bit. Oh, tell man. me, tell me what you think about that matchup. Cause I've got another one. I, I wanted to happen this next year. It's not going to happen, but we already talked about the, the other team. So you go ahead. Tell me, tell me about Miami, Miami. So I, that's a tough spot, you know, cause I was like, you know, like this is like a game that every, every kid, you know, just like plays on their Xbox at one point, Miami versus Miami on the, like, you know, on NCAA football is, I don't, I don't know if I would drop everything for, for that game. And I know, I know the college football sickles, sickles is going to hate me and everything, but it's just like, for me, I'm a big neutral site game guy. I'm a big bowl game guy. I just love what bowl games do for local communities. I love the tourist aspect, like an excuse to like go to a city you've never been to and like visit a museum. And it's just like, you know, there, there's other reasons yes. for me to go to Miami. Like I would yes. rather see Jackson State, like Florida A&M, or sorry, Florida A&M, Jackson State, because it's Florida A&M's classic, than see the Miami Bowl, you know. Um, so the the college football sickos are going to hate me for saying that, but it's like, you know. There's other games I would rather go to Miami for sure. That's all right. I mean, FAMU, Jackson State would be a great game to watch. So I think that that's awesome. I'd I'd love to actually hit an HBCU game um, sometime, but that's, you know, that's a ways out for me. And I'm I'm kind of invested in in going to the home games here. And the wife thinks that that's too much the way it is. So maybe someday when I'm retired. Uh, And then, so my, 
my thing is, and, and kind of our fan base too. So it's not just me. We're the real SDSU, right? We were first, we were SDSU first. The other, the other places, not the same. We have better football teams, you know, so, but we were hoping that maybe we could have scheduled San Diego state because we get called that all the time. Right. I mean, this is, this is the trope that happens all the time. You know, I was watching, I was watching some, uh, some YouTube last night and I came across this, this uh, outfit who I've never really heard of that were doing a breakdown of the national championship game. And, and they were kept calling them the Bisons and they, they were calling our players the wrong names. And, and, and I know it was a little bit petty of me, but I was like, Hey guys, I was really excited to watch this. I was going to share it with everyone I know, but you had so many mistakes in it. I just couldn't like, you know, it's, it's a respect deal. I, I didn't mean anything bad against them, but obviously that was the first time they watched SDSU play. You can't get Mark Gronowski's name, right. You know, and, and you don't apologize for it, eh, you know, so I don't know. I'd like to see SDSU SDSU because ESPN announcers heads would explode because they call us San Diego state or San Dakota state all the time. It's just, and, and we've, just kind of grown tired of it yeah like my favorite aspect of that is um i forget i forget uh which bowl game i was watching but on the halftime show like they show they like they really showed san diego state highlights like when talking about oh, yeah. south dakota state and i was like uh-huh. is anyone catching this right now like like no like- we all caught it that was the ndsu game the game before our game versus okay, montana okay. state they were playing red and black team and at first we're like oh okay maybe they're showing the other team montana state no no what no what that's san diego oh my gosh yeah san diego state the only the only guy that's ever atoned for it and and he tweeted to me this year is scott van pelt you know he's been cool about it since he made his first mistake he also accidentally got mark gronowski's name he called him gronkowski kind of easy to do and i was like just for the record man i, I know you guys like being accurate it is gronowski not gronkowski so and he he responded very 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 cordially and and uh you know actually got a second follow-up tweet too so I was pretty humbled by that, honestly, because, uh, you know, I'm nobody compared to Scott Van Pelt, right? So, no, I, I agree. And, like, the fun thing is, too, it's, like, from a tourist perspective, um, going to the Holiday Bowl this year with the family, like, uh, I think South Dakota State fans, like, should absolutely travel to San Diego just to go to SeaWorld. Like, SeaWorld is just, like, so – I was pleasantly surprised by it. I'm, like, because – Cause like my, my mom and I, like my mom and I, we got like military rates cause like my mom served and like, you know, like me just being in, I'm just like, I'm just doing this cause it's free. And I was telling people like, yeah, I'm going to try to get escorted out because like, I don't lose any money. Like it doesn't matter to me, but I'm like, you know what, like this is actually a fun place to be, you know? So hopefully that doesn't, that doesn't kill my chances of like, of a PETA sponsorship with, uh, with this podcast, but it's like, you know, I'm sure South Dakota, Dakota state fans would just love, you know, going to sea world and like, you know, you see the animals. Yeah, we got PETA up here too, but it stands for PETA, people for the eating and tasty animals. So I guess that's what happens when you raise beef cows. Um, <laughs> they literally surround my house. So, you know, whatever. Hey, uh, so they have like free for free admittance for armed services yeah, members. It's at- like something like that. Like for me, like it cool. was, and plus two on top of that, like they gave the first 5,000 people at the holiday bowl, like the night before, like free admission to the uh, game oh, okay. or yeah, to yeah, the yeah, SeaWorld yeah. too. So it was like, they just want people to come to SeaWorld. So I well, that's know, not trivial. Cause it's fairly expensive. I've been there twice. And, and uh, if, if I knew I could have got a deal, that's, that's what I was going for. Yeah. Like, man, I could have maybe got a small deal on it. It wasn't cheap, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it was either that. It was like, so I think like my mom got him free and then she got like 30% off for like my siblings that like were, cool. you know, were uncovered by me. But so, yeah, I mean, I, I would look into it too, but you know, SDSU, SDSU, it's like these, like these meme games, like uh, I guess with the way our culture is now, like so, so much into like memes and jokes, like there, there is absolutely like good potential for it, you know, like you know, there, there's this great potential for meme games, honestly. So, you know, I, I think we I, just I got to get the sickos behind it. If we exactly, get the sickos yeah. behind it, 
they have they have a national voice it's a little stronger we get them behind that and we push that narrative and and we can have the the sdsu bowl if we want to call it that you know yeah exactly yeah you know loser gets a season assist <laughs> you know so I, I would say we'll play them next year and loser gets rights to the sdsu game in fact we could probably play them any year and win them win that game so in football i mean we just traditionally have a better football team than they do so I, I don't think that's a stretch to say that they're like you said pfl i don't ever call it that but yeah well, no, that, that's usd U, usd is oh yeah, yeah sorry sorry yep yeah, you're right you're right yes yes he's mountain west so that's why i was kind of like uh, mountain like, west yeah no i was confused yeah that's my fault never never mind yeah they have a good football team <laughs> but okay, we probably okay. could beat them you know yeah no, i think we exactly. could i mean look yeah. what we did to colorado state not this year but last we went out and we beat the brakes off of them quite literally i mean we beat them worse last year with arguably a little less i I think i think it's arguable that our team this year was better than last year is what i'm trying to say and and we beat the brakes off of them then and uh yeah they're kind of a bottom dwelling team of the mountain west typically so they but they were good this year right that's yes you were colorado state uh no no sdsu sorry oh well, sdsu i mean like well yeah like they're, they're not a bottom dollar like they they are actually a contender in the mountain west oh never um, mind then <laughs> i yeah, don't they, know they, they won they won 11 games um i was like yeah they won 11 games in uh 2021 so it's like i'm, I'm not i'm not sure yeah, I okay, you, yeah you know? no you definitely stopped me so i say i like college football but but what i really mean by that is i like fcs football i don't really follow p5 I, I, I don't really even, yeah, I just, I don't watch those games. I not, I, I don't go on college game day on Saturdays. So um, yeah. So there's my ignorance there. I'm pretty good at sticking my foot in my mouth and I probably just did so. So, all right. I mean, if you've ever watched me on my podcast, you know, that's my thing. That's what I do. I stick my foot in my mouth. It's, it's totally normal. All right. <laughs> he yeah, put so no yeah. airs on for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, I mean, Honest mistake, it's you know, understandable. But yeah, like I do think South Dakota State would be very competitive against San Diego State, you know. Um, but yeah, like like only only time will tell if we actually get that game, you know. I mean, um, so I, I think I think it's good, it's good to get like it's different like programs, like different like pockets of pockets of the country out to San Diego too. Uh, you know, just for the I mean, not just Sea World, just you know, the military aspect too, that like, you know being a great like naval town and everything like a lot yeah, of I lot mean, of Navy's ships on display, awesome. so yeah a little bit better than the army so go Dang. navy <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah we talked about it before and i'm just yeah, yeah. It. and yes i did know the difference but i got confused so fun fact when i was in high school we went down there my concert choir got invited to sing down at uh down at disneyland and so we went and had clinics at both usd and sdsu like the same day and so to this day i still confuse them i just have to try and remember that usd's colors are closer to sdsu's and s and and the aztecs right sdsu's the aztecs they're the ones that have our rival our in-state rivals colors red and black so so we could have a red blue game i mean if we played them exactly exactly great yeah, no, I, like I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah, I think I think we've covered everything and a lot more. Uh, Chad, is there anything final you'd like to add before uh, we conclude? No, I already threw the go navy in there, so I think we're good. <laughs> okay. All right. No, it's it's definitely been a pleasure. Like I, I really enjoyed this saying uh this won't be the last time I invite you on. You know, I'll I'll find something South Dakota State related to talk about or MVFC related to talk about. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'd love to be on. You won't find a less knowledgeable guy to bring on. So <laughs> um, no, no, we can have a good true. time every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not true. But um, but this has definitely been a pleasure, Chad. Thank you again. And uh, until next time, everyone, peace, love, and soul.